Hello and welcome back to Learn CSS on Code Academy. In the previous section, we went over different ways of selecting our elements from our HTML and applying CSS to them. I'm going to go ahead and open up, we already have open the example from our last video, which just shows how to link our CSS to our HTML. And as we can see here, we have this link that links to our external styles CSS file. We left it off with a background of red. This is how it started. So I promised we would practice some of the stuff that we learned. So let's uh, go into index. We have this H1. Let's also add under it a paragraph that says, hello, everyone. And then close this P. Also, we'll make an unordered list with an ID. Well, we won't do it to that. We'll do an unordered list. And in here, we'll do list items with class equal to list item. And then we'll do another list item. We'll do an ID for our paragraph here. We'll call it paragraph. Okay. So with that there, let us go into our CSS. First, let's uh, refresh this. Still have a background color of red. Let's take that off. We don't have anything in our list items. So let's say some stuff and some other stuff. So right now we just have basic H1, paragraph, and list items. In our CSS, we can select the H1 and add stuff like a background color and make this purple text align do center okay under this we can select our ID which was paragraph here we also want to do a text align center we can do this on background color red. So then we can target list items, and I'll do this one so we can remember specificity. So what we can do, we'll do text align center as well, and uh, we'll do that here. Actually, to prove a point, I'll do text align, and I'll do uh, left. Okay. So only one list item have the class list item that first list item will be aligned to the left whereas the rest of the list items will be centered and this was because of specificity this class is more specific and therefore will so let's also do two other things here we'll do a background color of red no nope. let's do it yellow and then down here, we'll also do a background color, and this time we'll make it blue. So the first list item will not be yellow or be centered. It will be blue and align left, whereas the second list item will be yellow and centered. And let's check this out. And as we can see, our styles were applied, and that list item is blue and left and align left, whereas this list item is yellow and centered. With that, let us continue to chaining selectors. When writing CSS rules, it's possible to require an HTML element to have two or more CSS selectors at the same time. This is done by combining multiple selectors, which we will refer to as chaining. For instance, if there was a dot .special class for H1 elements, the CSS would look like this, H1 dot .special. The code above would select only the H1 elements that have a class of special. If a P element also had a class of special, the rule in the example would not style the paragraph. Instructions. Let's use chaining to select the destinations to add a style to them. In style.css, write a CSS selector for H2 elements with a class of dot destination. Inside the selector's curly braces, write this. So in style CSS, which we're in, write a CSS selector for H2 elements with a class of dot destination. 
So as we can see, we, we don't have any H2 elements with class destination selected here. We could either add to the top or bottom. I'll just do it up here. And we want to do H2 and dot destination. Font family is cursive. Let's see what happens if we add a space here. Though it's told us to put it together, out of curiosity, let's run this. Did you write a selector for the H2 tag in the destination class in style CSS? So let us try putting it together, running it again, and it did work here. So it is important that there is no space here. Let us go next. Nested elements. In addition to chain selectors to select elements, CSS also supports selecting elements that are nested within other HTML elements. For instance, Consider the following HTML, UL class main list. The nested li elements are selected with the following CSS. We got main list, and here's that space li. In the example above, the main list selects the main list element, the unordered list element. The nested li are selected by adding li to the selector separated by a space, resulting in dot main list space li as the final selector. Note the space in the selector. Selecting elements in this way can make our selectors even more specific by making sure they appear in the context we expect. In index.html, each destination has a description paragraph below it. So here's our index.html. Like it says, each destination has a description paragraph. So each destination has its description paragraph. There's a list of attractions. Let's select the top attractions element and make it stand out more by making it real. Navigate the style CSS at a selector that targets all of the H5 elements nested inside elements with class dot description. So back in here, add a selector that targets all of the H5 elements nested inside the elements with class dot description description and we're getting the H5s. So that's the first part it's telling us. Let's run that. We did pass that. Inside of curly braces of the selector, write color teal. Here, color teal. We'll run this. And we do get top attractions in the color teal. Next, chaining and specificity. In the last exercise, instead of selecting all H5 elements, you selected only the H5 elements nested inside the dot description elements. This CSS selector was more specific than writing only H5, adding more than one tag. Class or ID to a CSS selector increases the specificity of the CSS selector. For instance, consider the following CSS, paragraph color blue, and then there's dot main P, and it gets color red. Both of the CSS rules define what a P element should look like. Since dot main P has a class and a P tag as its selector, only the P elements inside the dot main element will appear red. This occurs despite there being another more general rule that states P elements should be blue. In style.css, write a selector for H5 elements inside of the curly braces, right? So we go over here. We're doing one for an H5 and we're giving it a color Rebecca purple. Never heard of that. Let's see what this is. Notice that the H5 elements in the description will not change color. They will continue to be teal. This is due to there being a more specific selector for H5 elements that you wrote in the last exercise. So let's try this. Run that. We passed. And as you guys can see, it's still teal. Let's go next. Important. There's one thing that is even more specific than IDs, exclamation point, important. Exclamation important can be applied to specific attributes instead of full rules. It will override any style no matter how specific it is. As a result, it should almost never be used. Once exclamation point important is used, it is very hard to override. The syntax of exclamation point important in CSS looks like this. We have our paragraph color blue and we give it this important command. So since exclamation point important is used on the P selectors color attribute, all P elements will appear blue even though there is a more specific dot main P selector that sets the color attribute to red. The exclamation important flag is only useful when an element appears the same way 100% of the time. 
Since it's almost impossible to guarantee that this will be true throughout a project and over time, it's best to avoid exclamation important altogether. If you ever see this important used or are ever tempted to use it yourself, we strongly recommend reorganizing your CSS. Making your CSS more flexible will typically fix the immediate problem and make your code more maintainable in the long run. So add an exclamation important to the H5 selectors color attribute that you defined in the last exercise. Important should go after Rebecca purple and before the semicolon. Important. So now if we go, we run, we now get this color. Go next. Multiple selectors. In order to make CSS more concise, it's possible to add CSS styles to multiple CSS selectors all at once. This prevents writing repetitive code. For instance, the following code has repetitive style attributes. H1 font family Georgia dot many font family Georgia. Instead of writing font family Georgia twice for two selectors, we can separate the selectors by a comma to apply the same style on both, like this. H1 and dot menu both get the font family of Georgia. By separating the CSS selectors with a comma, both the H1 and the dot menu elements will receive the font family Georgia styling. Write selectors for the H5 and P elements so they both will be styled with the same CSS or will apply this style to both elements. Here we're doing H5s and P elements and we're doing font family Georgia. So run that did a pass and, and that is pretty much this whole first part so let's review css selectors throughout this lesson you learn how to select html elements with css and apply styles to them let's review what you've learned css can change the look of html elements in order to do this css must select html elements then apply styles to them css can select html elements by tag class or id Multiple CSS classes can be applied to one HTML element. Classes can be reusable, while IDs can only be used once. IDs are more specific than classes, and classes are more specific than tags. That means IDs will override any styles from a class, and classes will override any style from a tag selector. Multiple selectors can be chained together to select an element. This raises the specificity, but can be necessary. But can be necessary. Nested elements can be selected by separating selectors with a space. The exclamation important flag will override any style. However, it should almost never be used as it is extremely difficult to override. Multiple unrelated selectors can receive the same styles by separating the selector names with commas. Great work this lesson. With this knowledge, you will be able to use CSS to change the look and feel of websites to make them look great. Feel free to continue when you're ready. So that was Learn CSS, Selectors, and Visual Rules. I will see you guys in the next lesson.